In logic locking, uh, the idea is whenever somebody applies an incorrect key, the design outputs are corrupted. In other words, the design produces wrong outputs. While in VLSI testing, we have a very similar concept. Um, we have these faults that lead to errors, and uh, these errors lead to wrong outputs, just like what we're intending to do in logic locking with incorrect keys. So there's this connection between faults and logic locking, and this presentation module explores this connection. In testing, faults refer to logic level abstraction of physical defects. Physical defects can be in any form, and the underlying reason could be anything from uh, dust uh, particles on, on uh, masks or alignment issues or bridges, but faults are simple abstraction of these defects. We simply define them at a logical level. For instance, a stuck at fault represents a net that is stuck at a certain value, 0 or 1, regardless of what inputs that that net receives. So to be able to test for these faults, uh, in testing what we do is we make certain input assignments to make sure that the fault is activated. And once it's activated, we make more assignments to make sure that the, the effect of this fault propagates to the outputs so that the, the effect is observable. Only then we can say that we have a test vector that can differentiate the response of the circuit when the fault is present from the response of the circuit when it's correct. So that test vector is set to detect this particular fault. Now in the case of a stuck at zero fault, to activate it we need to bring a one and vice versa, stuck at one requires a zero uh, for activation. And to propagate the effect of the stuck at fault, what we need to do is we need to assign all the side inputs of the gates uh, from the faulty net to the outputs to the non-controlling values of the gates. For AND, the non-controlling value is 1. For OR, the non-controlling value is 0. So let's go back to logic locking. Uh, we have a very simple example here. Uh, we, have, we have the original circuit on the left and the logic locked circuit on the right. Um, we're only using one key gate in this particular example, which means we have one key bit. This is a very basic example for the sake of illustrating the concepts. So ideally what we want is in, when, when the key is correct, we want the correct outputs, and when the key is incorrect, we want uh, incorrect outputs. So this is a desired behavior. When you apply all zeros, you get all zeros on the left, and under the correct key, which is zero, we expect all zeros in response to uh, all zeros. This is desired behavior, but um, what we want to make sure is when the key is incorrect, in this particular case when it's 1, uh, we don't want the correct outputs to be produced. And this is what we get in this example. When we apply all zeros with an incorrect key, instead of getting all zeros, we're getting all ones, so that all the outputs are corrupted in this particular case. This is a good result. Uh, what we don't want is when we apply an incorrect key, uh, and yet we get the correct outputs, this is not desirable because uh, logic locking in this particular case for that input pattern is not providing any protection whatsoever. Um, why did this happen in this particular case? Well, it's because the two gates controlling the outputs are both receiving the controlling values of the gates, and as, as a result, the, the effect of the incorrect key is blocked right there at that level. It's not able to make it to the outputs. Next, we make the connection between faults and the, the application of invalid keys in the context of logic locking. So, fault excitation refers to a fault, faulty net, receiving a value uh, and then the error being introduced right there. For instance, stuck at zero net receiving a value of one and then an error is, is uh, produced on that net. Now, in the context of logic locking, on the example on the right, uh, we have this key gate, the, the XOR gate E1. If it receives a value of 1 from K1, which is the incorrect value of the key, then effectively the XOR gate acts like a NOT gate and inverts A. This is very similar or identical to the behavior of a stuck A0 on that net being excited. Once the fault is excited on the left, in order to observe the fault, it needs to be propagated to the to the outputs. That net needs to be sensitized to the outputs, which require setting all the side inputs of the gates on the way to non-controlling values. 
and we expect the same requirement on the on the right as well when the incorrect key is applied and the net produces an error as a result of the incorrect key for us to be able to observe the effect of this incorrect key uh, this this net this key gate output needs to be sensitized to the outputs so that the error is propagated to the outputs and the outputs are corrupted when we talk about multiple key gates or multiple key bits then we're talking about multiple faults in, in the other side testing domain. So on the left, we have multiple stucket uh, faults, and on the right, we have multiple key gates, E1, E2, E3, which means we have multiple key bits. So if we're talking about applying in invalid keys to multiple of these key gates, this is equivalent to exciting multiple of the faults on the left. And when these faults are activated altogether, it is possible that they may cancel out the effect of each other, just like the effect of email key bits cancelling the effect of uh, each other on the right. So fault masking in the VLSI testing domain is equivalent to cancellation of email keys in, in logic locking. So in this in this module, we talked about the connection between faults from the LSI testing domain to the application of email keys in the context of logic locking. Thank you very much for listening.